The old pier in Bridport, Tasmania is an iconic structure. Opened in 1917, the pier celebrates its 100th birthday this year, 2017. experiencing numerous storms and fire. It has survived in its present form to remind us of a bygone era when timber carting sailing ships plied between Bridport, Melbourne and Adelaide. The pier was built at a time when shipping to intrastate markets was in high demand. Produce from the rich agricultural districts at Ringaruma and Scottsdale were being sent by rail to Launceston and then down the Tamer to Melbourne and Sydney. In 1911, the Tasmanian Timber Company had built a railway line from the Forrester Mill to the pier at Croquillon Beach in Bridport. Timber was already being sent from the Forrester district by Bridport to Melbourne and Adelaide. Harvesting the hardwood and blackwood forests in the Forrester and Mount Horror area, they were supplying the ever-growing demand for house building timber in the rapidly expanding suburbs of Melbourne. And with specialist blackwood industries such as billiard table manufacture in Adelaide. Using a combination of bullocks, horse-drawn tramways and steam haulers, they operated around the Mount Horror area from 1911 until the late 1920s. In the bush, a Harman winder, the first of its kind in the northeast, stretches out its cables for half a mile and sinuously draws 11 tonnes of logs out to the loading skids. From here, the logs are placed on steel trucks and a fussy little locomotive draws them on a two foot six inch gauge to the mill skids. The engine that has been in use since cutting started in 1912 is a Kraus, a powerful little model locally known as the Eddy. Barney Miller is the engine driver. The mill, roofed in galvanised iron, was 300 feet long and it had a 20 foot long sawdust extractor pipe. Currently there are over 800,000 super feet of timber racked in the yards. The machinery was driven by a 45 horsepower horizontal steam engine with a 100 pound Cornish boiler. A 12 foot diameter driving wheel carries the main belt. The mill had twin big breaking down saws. The mill employed some 30 men and a small settlement was established at Forrester for the workers. Forrester had its own school and football team. The team actually beat Scottsdale at one stage. A visit to the mill in 1919 said it was the most up-to-date mill in Tasmania. It was quite a substantial mill for its time, located alongside Purley Brook under Williams Hill, near Forrester. The train line follows the course of Pearly Brook to its green clad banks. In a few minutes we reach the Forest River. Further on towards Bridport, it follows Tuckers Creek. The whistle shrieks as we pass a crossing and then run parallel with the Barnburgle Road.
As we enter Bridport, we pass the Old Forester Inn, up on the bank above the bridge over the Brit River. The inn was run by Mr W H Jones, a retired mariner. Over to the left is Torrington House, once the residence of Captain Smythe who ran the Coronella, but is now run as a guest house by Mrs Andrews. This is the location of the early village centre of Bridport. Some of the first blocks of land were sold to the Brewers, Hazelwoods, Campbells, as well as Thomas Diffrose and Joseph Crabtree. We cross the Brid River, upstream from the road bridge. The railway follows the main road, passing two small houses, one occupied by Dada Nilsson, a one-time lighthouse keeper and master mariner. Near the remains of the old Dorset steam navigation jetty and sheds, we see the new Smythes house on the corner. Back in the 1880s, this jetty and sheds were busy storing tin from the northeast tin mines, waiting to be shipped to Launceston on the SS Dorset. It was also the site for early boat building by Mr Lockwood. With the advent of rail to Scotsell and Derby, the shipping trade at Bridport declined. For a while, the sheds were used as a village hall, dances being held particularly in summer. Eventually the buildings fell into disrepair. Some residents commenting on these dances said it was possible to see water underneath through the gaps in the floorboards. Passing through the village, we skirt along the foreshore, passing campers, before coming to the company's jetty at Crokey Lawn Beach. Here we find the company's 93-foot auxiliary schooner Rara, capable of carrying 135 tonnes of cargo or 50,000 super feet of timber. She made regular trips to Melbourne, carrying timber from the mill and returning with general cargo for Bridport, Scottsdale, Ringarooma and Branksome. Also at anchor in the bay was the Three Cheers and the Heather Bell. Most vessels preferred to anchor in the bay, only tying up at the jetty when loading or unloading cargo. In March 1915, the Tasmanian Timber Company ran a special train from Forrester to Bridport for its workers and their families to watch the Bridport sports and have a picnic at the beach near the company's pier. When the Crokelon Pier was dismantled, it was found to be infested by boring Torito worms. The Tasmanian Timber Company's pier at Crokelon was dismantled when the present old pier at Granite Point was built in 1917. The Tasmanian Timber Company agreed to use the new Granite Point jetty to ship its timber to Melbourne and pay the North East Harbour Trust for its use. Today, all that remains of the Croquet Lawn Jetty are a couple of piles and a couple of holes in the rock. The new Granite Point Jetty was built using New South Wales turpentine logs which resist the boring Torito worm. The Tasmanian Timber Company extended its rail line from Croquet Lawn Jetty along the foreshore to the new jetty at Granite Point. The new Orenstein and Koppel small locomotive was brought from a Queensland copper mine and used to cart logs from the forest to the mill. The spark arresting smokestack on the new locomotive was removed because the engine driver, Barney Miller, thought it looked ridiculous.
coming into Bridport in summer, children were often given a ride on the tender to help put out fires on the foreshore caused by the train. Note the children sitting on top of the tender. Probably not taken on the Bridport line, but the engine driver did have to blow the whistle to scare beasts off the line between Forrester and Bridport. April 1917 was a significant month for Bridport residents, with the arrival of the Holloman steamer SS Camilla, the first vessel to load at the new jetty. Part of the cargo that was loaded included a cow from Norm Andrews. That year saw another special event when the Barnet boys caught two large sharks that were lurking at the end of the new jetty. After snapping the wire trace twice, a larger hook was made and a few shots from a rifle steadied him before he was pulled ashore. The shark was three metres long. The Barnet family came to Bridport in 1913. Charlie and Asunto had 13 children and the family played an important role in the development of Bridport. Charlie helped build the railway from Bridport to Forrester and later built a house in the new part of Bridport near the Granite Point jetty. It was quite substantial for its day and it is still standing in good condition. The present owners have even built a new picket fence to match the original one. In those days, the Barnets had a commanding view of the bay and the remains of the old Croquillorn jetty. Just like the children today in Bridport, the beach was their playground. The Barnet boys worked on the jetty, loading and unloading timber and cargo. Living near the pier, one of Charlie Barnet's jobs was to make sure the red light on the end of the pier was kept lit. In the terrible storm of 1921, the Rara broke her moorings at the jetty and was washed up on Barnbogle Beach. Fortunately, she was refloated without damage. In the 1920s, steamships visited the port. This is the SS Tamba. In the 1920s, Bridport was a thriving seaside town with a busy port and a growing population with many holiday makers. A hall had been built in 1914 and in 1921 the Barnets built a guest house in the new part of town. Here we see Charlie and two of his sons pouring the foundations for an extension to the guest house. In 1921 the timber catch Alpha had been wrecked at Waterhouse Point. I was told that some of the salvaged timber was used in constructing the guest house and for some years the building supported a flagpole made from one of the Alpha's masts. Bridport was becoming a popular holiday destination and the guest houses were busy in summer. Fishing was always a popular pastime. A school had been started in 1913, originally held in the church, then moved to the hall. In 
Suitors ran a regular bus service to Scottsdale and Launceston. The late 1920s saw a decline in the Forrester Mills activity and in 1928 it finally closed. But Bridport was still a favourite holiday destination. Many holiday homes were built behind the foreshore. Dorothy Claridge still lives near the original Murphy home near the Granite Point jetty. I talked to her about the good old days in Bridport. So I'm talking to Dorothy Claridge on Murphy's Beach, Bridport, July 2017. Now, Dorothy, you're holding this photograph of you on the beach. Yes. In Murphy's Beach. Yes. Tell me a bit about it. Well, I must have been about four years old there, and the bathing cap and all on, and it was taken with a little old-fashioned box brownie camera, about three by two, whatever the photo was. I have still got the photo. Right. Yes. And that would have been summertime, would it? Yes, it would have been, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, were, we did think about asking you to get into your bathers again, but uh, this is the middle of winter. So <laughs> a little, <I'm>, little <laughs> bit cool. <laughs> yeah. About when would that have been taken? I think about 1934. Right. Around about that time. I'd be about four years old there. Yeah. And I was born in 1930, so about that time. So you're still a beachgoer, aren't you? Oh, yes. Go swimming every summer with a group of ladies. <clears throat> every day, nearly. Right. Oh, well, that's very good. Good to see you keeping the tradition going. Yes, it's lovely. Now, tell me, Dorothy, how long have the Murphy family been involved in Bridport? Um, since about 1914, when Father bought the land down here, the acre of land down here. Is that the same block that your but, basic house is on now? Not my house. Two houses down from me, the little cream house. Yes, and the little cream house there was my grandparents' house. And so the Murphys have been coming to Bridport since then? Ever since then, yes. And, and their involvement in Bridport? Well, Grandma was a very forward person. She got on the Progress Association and she helped build the tennis court along here and she helped build the croquet lawn. Many hours we spent playing croquet on the croquet lawn with her when we came for holidays. You would probably remember the pier burning at some stage. Yes, I watched it burn twice. The first time I walked along the promenade with my grandfather because he thought the shed on the shore would burn. So to me, that's why I say the inner half burned first. How it stopped, I have no idea. But then my grandmother and grandfather were living here by then, and the, my grandmother said, quick, Dave, get the bucket, the pier's on fire. <laughs> they, they put out a lot of little fires. Well, then in 1942, I stood on the beach just over there and watched it, the outer half burn with my auntie and uncle on their honeymoon, so that's how I remember the date. It's a bit curious, isn't it, that yeah. it burned in different places at different times? Yes, yes. Somebody else told me the other day that they put out fires on it too. Oh, right. So somebody must have definitely wanted it burnt down. Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> I believe so. Well, thanks very much for talking to us. We're going to, uh, as you know, we're going to put this in the history of the old pier and uh, <laughs> right. part of the history of Bridport. Yes, thank you, Jeff. Thanks again, Dorothy. Thank you. In the 1930s, the trains no longer ran to Bridport and the rails were pulled up and used on the Warrantina mill. The upkeep of the jetty was originally paid for from wharfage fees, but with no ships coming, it became a burden to ratepayers. In 1926, the Scottsdale Progress Association constructed a walking track and picnic grounds along the foreshore. Dad and Nilsson had set up a picnic area up the Great Forester River near Barnburgle. Bridport has a natural foreshore today because this area was originally leased to the timber company, preventing its sale when land to the west of Main Street was put up for auction by the government. Eventually, the foreshore area was leased to the Scottsdale Council as a reserve and recreation area. This 8mm film, supplied by Diana Hardywish Wilson, shows family and friends enjoying a typical Bridport summer at the beach and on the old pier. Though the old pier was finally burnt down in 1942, it didn't stop enterprising youngsters 20 years later using it as a diving board.
the jetty still attracts visitors and photographers. Surviving storms and howling gales. Some of the piles have worked loose and drifted away, but the wood is still in remarkable condition, considering it has been in the sea a hundred years. In 1988, the New Zealand sailing ship Spirit of New Zealand sailed into the bay and anchored off the jetty. The sail training ship Young Endeavour, Britain's bicentennial gift to Australia, also came into the bay, bringing back memories of a bygone era. <laughs> 